Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Fat Mata here from Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art and I'm super excited to be back today with a Friday Sews and I wanted to update you on what I've made and plans and just things that are coming up. Let's begin. I've been talking about making this bomber jacket for I don't know how many weeks now. I was getting tired of hearing myself talk about it. I was hoping to get it to you all, but also just wanting it so badly in my closet. And I have my bomber jacket. I'm so excited. I use Simplicity S9190 and it is intended to be this men's bomber jacket. I did view B and that is the non-quilted version. There are a number of things that I did differently in this pattern, but I will start by saying I cut out a size 38, which is a chest measurement of a 45 and a half. Um, inch chest and that's around like my husband's size so I felt like I wanted this sort of oversized feel something like I just grabbed it out of his closet so I just went with that sizing um, my bust me measurement is about what 34 36 inches so there is quite a bit of ease there about 10 extra inches or so so I felt like that was a nice fit I did have to make some alterations to begin let's just appreciate the jacket ah look at the jacket so here's the jacket it's in this fabulous tapestry fabric that I thrifted some time ago and I absolutely love it I picked up this ribbing as well as the pieces for the lining all in the dead stock section at G Street fabrics on various occasions so I'll go ahead and pop it on the mannequin just so I can talk through some of the changes that I had to make personally to make this work for me for the fit that I wanted. Like I mentioned, I cut out a size 38, giving me about 10 inches of wearing ease in the bust for me. And that felt really nice. However, because I cut out a size 38, it meant that the shoulder seam kind of was really dropped shoulder which I don't mind. It's oversized. It was a bit of the look, but it was so baggy that it really wasn't giving like the full aesthetic that I wanted. And it just looked like it was ill fitting. So I was hemming and hawing because I've been doing this project and working on it piece by piece. So I had to sit there with it for a second. And I thought to myself, you could let this slide or you are still, you know, you have the lining done and you also have the outer piece, but you haven't attached them yet. If you want to make changes, now is the time. So I went ahead and I'll insert some images, but I ended up going into the shoulder seam where it meets the sleeve cap and removing about half of an inch, like pinching out half of an inch, which really is removing half of an inch from the shoulder and half of an inch from the sleeve cap itself. So about an inch fully, if you were to think of it that way from how low the sleeve was hanging, which wasn't too dramatic, but honestly made the difference. So I'm really happy that I stuck with it and did that on both sleeves and also did that on the lining pieces as well. So I'll insert a photo of what that sort of little curve <laughs> was that I sort of absorbed and took up. I tried to make sure that I was easing that in to ensure that I wasn't going to get any weird puckers because of that alteration and I think I did a pretty great job. This pattern is intended to have these awesome welt pockets with flaps and I was super excited about it listen I cut out all the pieces I was ready to go now in working with this fabric because it frays so much and because it's a tapestry fabric it's a bit meatier than like a cotton sateen and I was just thinking to myself about how challenging it could be to try and sew a welt pocket Having this fabric doubled, having to then um, place not only the actual pocket piece, but also the flap and how bulky those seams would be. 
and trying to do a welt pocket for the first time. I haven't done a welt pocket yet, so I was intrigued that it was included in this pattern and can't wait to give that a try, but I was trying to really figure out if this was the fabric and the project for that exploration, and I decided it wasn't. <laughs> so I wasn't gonna stress myself with that, but I had already cut out all of the pieces for this. So for the pocket pieces, you have your pocket, piece number four, and then you have your pocket lining. And I am just going to kind of put these two on top of each other so you can see that the pocket lining is slightly, see right there, slightly shorter at the slant part where you actually insert your pocket than the, you know, piece number four, the larger pocket piece. When I then pivoted and decided to do inseam pockets, it's what I eventually decided to do, <laughs> that was just a little bit of an issue because the width here along this edge where you would insert your hand as if it were to be a welt pocket is a bit wider than this side insertion here, right? Because it wasn't intended for you to insert your hand this way. <laughs> but to do my inseam pockets, this was the way <laughs> that I was going to have to insert my hand. And because I also had the lining pocket piece, which as you can see, it's shorter, right? Um, by at least five eighths of an inch. That just meant that I had even less <laughs> space to fit in my hand and for me when I put in an inseam pocket I do like to sew just a little bit of a lip to ensure that whatever I put into that pocket is not going to immediately just slide out so I did do that resulting in what is a very tight entryway to my pocket okay I can fit my hand in there but just barely folks and the real question is can I fit my phone in it right so I mean like just barely just just barely y'all <laughs> it does have a good depth to it and I could stand my phone straight up like further in but it's 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 shallow <laughs> all right so that is something that I would absolutely do differently if I chose to do this pattern again and if I chose to go ahead and turn it into inseam pockets I would just sort of continue this line straight across so that I have a wider opening for the inseam pocket but again I'd already cut out the pieces I could have switched and cut out a different piece of fabric to do the pocket once I determined that I was going to do inseam pockets but I didn't feel like it I wanted to use up all of the fabric that I had used also it has this really cool sort of like guard piece in front of the zipper teeth, which I think is really interesting. So as you can see here, what the model is wearing. So it has that flap. Now, when I looked at that pattern piece, I thought this is really wide. So they would have you like zigzag stitch it and stuff. I thought it was just so wide <laughs> and I didn't like that so much. So I actually trimmed off, I believe five eighths of an inch. So I trimmed off this much from the piece that I had already cut out just to make it a little bit narrower because I didn't want that huge placket piece just sticking out like this. I was like, that's a that's a lot. <laughs> so I trimmed it off just a little bit and I really liked the way that that looked. I didn't do this zigzag pattern. I just did some top stitching straight up and down about five rows of that to give it that sort of quilted effect to give it a bit more structure and stability. Also, one of the things that you'll notice in this pattern piece is that I sort of moved or like slanted this placket up a little bit. The way that it looks in the image here, it just sort of like juts out and just starts. And then you have about five eighths of an inch before you get to the collar. And I didn't like that either. I was like, just ease into it, you know, like ramp up. So I did change that, however, in the making of this, I pulled out from my stash separating zippers that I've thrifted over time and that I had in my stash. I had a really bold cobalt blue <laughs> zipper and this is 23 inches and this pattern calls for a 22 inch separating zipper. But then I also found this really darling um, metal zipper, separating zipper in my stash that has this light blue tape 
And I was like, I like that one much better. I like the metal zipper. It's like a gold metal, which would really pick up some of these nice, you know, creamy sorts of colors, tan colors in here. So I really wanted to use that zipper. So instead, I went ahead with this option. Now, because of that, and because of the fact that this was a 21 inch zipper, it was like Goldilocks, too big, too small. You know, I was looking for something just right. Anyway, because I went with the 21 inch zipper, I had to then figure out how to lower the neckline just a smidge. I went ahead and cut off this little wedge. All right, it's about one and a half ish inches at its longest point and just sort of like curve that out into the rest of the neckline. So where my sort of collar peaks down is a little bit lower than the pattern would intend and I forgot to make that adjustment onto the um, zipper guard when I was doing that. All in all, I think in the end it works out. I don't really think there's too much of an issue but there is a little bit of a gap between where the ribbing for the neck binding ends so about like maybe half an inch about five eighths of an inch that i really wish i would have um, focused and paid a bit more time to getting that absolutely right before i like put rows and rows of stitching to secure this in place so it is what it is now but i will learn that lesson for future reference and I could see myself playing around with that neckline and having it even lower. I've definitely pinned some bomber jackets in the past that have a really beautiful sort of low um, neckline with ribbing similar to this. After I sort of carved out that little bit and lowered that neckline, I had contemplated whether or not I would need to then cut out a new ribbing piece to make it longer so that it would fit that um, distance but I went ahead and took the time to baste it in place first and noticed that it actually would still work like the ribbing was stretchy enough and it wasn't causing any puckering or pulling that was noticeable to me at the time so I just went ahead and used the same pattern piece for the size 38 that I had originally cut of the ribbing and use that here. As I mentioned, this is a lined bomber jacket, so now is a good time to let you know that this is not finished, okay? I did wear it to work today, but it's not done. <laughs> I was just so excited to wear it after it was in a wearable state last night. So what is left to do, I still need to attach the lining to the cuff here. And I've gone ahead, I've already ironed it up. So I think what I need to do, they have, they would ask that you slip stitch it. So do it by hand. So I just have to find a way to like stretch out the ribbing enough and, you know, take the time to do that. I also need to slip stitch the lining to the front. You do see that it's beautifully laying down here. And that is because I use some of my um, fabric tape. I went ahead and sealed that baby down to the zipper tape and ironed it in place. So it's not really, you know, it's not it's not going anywhere. I'm not going to pull it too hard, but it's it's quite secure. But I do need to go in and slip stitch it. So that is really, really done. So the body of it, I did like this nice. I made a shirt out of this, but it feels like a light, almost has a very light crepey sort of texture but um a nice like polyester it's quite silky but for the sleeves i went with the super super silky fabric it's like um a satin jacquard sort of fabric and you might recognize this from my cousin's homecoming dress that we made for her and that is the same fabric there was some left over so i did that as the sleeve lining because it's super slippery and i'm so happy with this I have been working on this jacket on and off for quite some time so it feels really good to have it done and it was nice to be able to wear it to work today so I'm very proud of this make. I'm sure there are other things I could tell you about the jacket but honestly I think that's good for right now so I am just really really ecstatic to have it done. So I wanted to just say a huge thank you to everyone who has watched my most recent video which was my 
interview with my best friend. She's just gotten back into sewing after 10 years since her last full garment project. And I'm just so excited. We had a week together where she would come over and she made two pieces, one for her, one for her fiance for a friend's miss party that's coming up this Saturday actually. So I'm so excited to go tomorrow and get to see them in what she made. And I will link that video if you missed it, but it was just me getting her insight into getting back into sewing and I think it's worth a watch if you are someone like many of us in the comments who wishes they had an in real life sewing friend so just find a friend that you have and turn them into a sewing friend take them to a fabric store get them excited give them an easy project do it with them <laughs> They will become your sewing friend. <laughs> That's what I've learned. There are also some awesome comments in that video about beginner projects or great projects for those coming back to sewing that you can try. So I think it's worth a watch and worth a read in the comments as well. Speaking of which, my younger cousin was asking me if I could make her some pajama pants and I was like, you can. Yeah, I'll walk you through that process. That was not her question, but that's what I heard. Can you teach me how to sew so I can make my own pajama pants? That's what I heard. And so I answered yes. Come on in. Come on into the fold, my friend. So I showed her a bunch of the pajama patterns that I had. I was really looking for one of those that just has a single pattern piece leg, but she was interested in having a pocket. So through my stash we went and we settled on S1021. It is a men's um, pajama pattern, but you know how comfy pajama bottoms are? So it's basically unisex, okay? We are going with view B, the trousers here in view B. So she has already cut out that pattern and we measured her size and she's cut out the pattern and ironed everything and selected a fabric from my stash. She went with this lovely double sided double gauze fabric. Um, I am a generous soul. I know. I know. I picked this fabric up in the dead stock section at G Street Fabrics. So one of the sides is this beautiful sort of checked fabric with primarily the yellow. And this like, what do you call this? It's not gray, it's not green, but it lives in that family with a little bit of almost like a pink. And then on the back side, it's that same gray greenish color, almost like an olivey green and white sort of um, plaid or check. So very, very gorgeous double-sided fabric. I think she wants this primarily yellow side to be the main part of her fabric. So it's gonna be super cozy, like double gauze. It's awesome. I think I have about three yards of this. So I'm going to allow her to have this as her first project. And you know, I'll see how she goes. I'm obviously gonna be with her as she's sewing it, but I'm going to hopefully, allow it to be a really great experience and I'm hoping that she will join us slowly. She even brought down some um, ready to wear pajama pants that she had that need to be hemmed. So I'm going to introduce her to all of these new skills and it's going to be fabulous. So this is going to be her um, first project. So anyone who said PJs in um, you know the last video about what is a good beginner friendly pattern, I agree and that's what we're starting with. So I'll let you all know how that goes um, as we bring her into the fold. I have some acquisitions that I need to show you, which both of them have really, really interesting storylines as to how I came about these things. Let me explain. So last week, two weeks ago, at some point this month, one of my old colleagues who knows that I love sewing my own clothes and used to love guessing whether or not I made the thing that I was wearing that day, she forwarded me an email from a listserv that she is on from someone who is a designer of sorts who was saying that they were in possession of designer upholstery fabric remnants, about eight by eight inch swatches that they were getting rid of. This former colleague sent that to me saying, hey, thinking of you, you should go ahead and get these fabrics. I said, I'm on it. 
and thank you in advance. So I went ahead and emailed the person. I was like, listen, I might be able to come on Friday. They had messaged and said, listen, there's some interest from the community. I will go ahead and put this in the alleyway in my driveway and you can pull up. It'll be out Wednesday, Thursday. And if it doesn't rain on Friday, it'll be out on Friday. All right, so Friday morning, <laughs> um, after an appointment, I was like, I can just swing by really quickly into someone's driveway, walking through an alley. It was sketchy, so I thought, but it was cute. It was quaint, it was fine. I had to survey the scene when I arrived and I was like, okay, gotta check where I am. <laughs> but I did make my way and I was just rifling through all of these luscious, gorgeous upholstery swatches and they did not disappoint it was friday after they had already had these fabrics out for a number of days you know based on the email so i was really surprised that they even had as many swatches remaining as they did but let me show you what i got <sighs> it's so good um these come from hbf textiles i'm not familiar with them if you are wonderful tell us down below let me, I don't even know where to begin. Let me begin with the leathers. And I'm talking genuine, genuine leather. <laughs> Real leather, y'all. It's genuine leather. Hides. Swatches. Okay. What a boop. It's amazing. So I picked out these colorways. Look at this. These together. Mm -hmm. I And I know a lot of people are making gifts right now, but like this as a little like book corner. You know what I mean? A little book corner. Engrave the person's name on it. You know what I'm saying? What? So gorgeous. More colors. This nice little gray. This camel color. Oh, this Kelly green that's so in right now white and these ones are a bit larger right so like double the size i just got all the colors that made me happy look at this cream i feel like these could even become some sort of like leather pouch of sorts some sort of wallet right so i got a couple of colors all right so these are my genuine leather swatches and i was so grateful to have these in my collection i could even see if in the future i make like a really beautiful jacket and then do the patches if i'm already making a patchwork something then maybe i would use two different colors because i don't have any matching colors here and this in half might not be enough to do a full patch but if I was trying to lean into that sort of color blocked moment, I could do different patches. Just, you just have to wait until it happens, but it's gonna be good. And then they had these really interesting, almost like pre-quilted, really textured fabrics. So I picked up the coordinating colors that I just felt went so lovely together. Um, so this one has a really interesting print here and then you have this bold orange which is more like a brick outline and a more muted subdued orange if you will with this diamond shape the same diamond print in this almost teal colorway same diamond print in this gray colorway and then in the navy they coordinate so lovely together and this I think was that like eight by eight or so ish swatch size it tells me it doesn't. It's okay. Um, but just beautiful. I was very happy to have this. Then there were some faux leathers. Okay. All of these are faux leather in different textures. So you have this more like cropped texture. And I felt like this was such a great size. Like these would make great wallets, if you will. And then you put like a lining, put all the little slots for um, for cards and things like that if you were to double them up. So I got some coordinating and just like fabulous colors. These would also be really nice additions um, in some sort of patchworking situation. Like look at these colors, they're so gorgeous. And then you have a different type of pebbled sort of texture on. This one is a bit smaller and these are also faux leather. So I picked up these four colors here. 
And then you have this, which is almost like it gives off like it's a calf skin, but it's not, it doesn't have any hair, but that's the texture of it. So that was really interesting. It's Sable Island and it's 25 Mustang is the color. It's so gorgeous. You can see that sheen on there and they're really, really nice and malleable. So similar textures here in the gray and in the full colors. Then I have some smoother bits of the faux leather in these colorways here. And again, I just thought that these colors were so punchy. They pack such an impact and I cannot wait to dream up a project where I get to incorporate a bit of these together, okay? These are all those sort of like eight by eight swatches. Again, most of these are upholstery, some of them stain resistant, water resistant, etc. What I tried to do was look for sets, things that had the same um, amount of body or sort of weight to them, and I could tell we're in a collection, but just in various colorways like you're seeing here, because then I felt like that gave me great permission to then mix and match and use them together. So here I have about 10 or so of these swatches that I could use in the same garment because they're all the same print but just in various colorways and I'm really excited about that. This is a bit of a heavier weight and on the back you can kind of feel or see that it is very much so woven together. So all of these are surged around the edges with like a clear elastic, which is really nice. So it's holding it together. So once I determine what I plan to do with it, I'll definitely be very thoughtful about that. So when I'm cutting into them or if I decide to patchwork them, that I keep the integrity of the fabric. So for example, this is 61% recycled cotton, 24% rayon, 15% polyester. I think it's fabulous and the backing on it is acrylic so it does have that extra bit of stability. Then I have these four wool fabrics. Um, so really lovely colors again and I just thought it was nice to have these wool swatches that I can do some things with in the future. Finally, this set right here is what I'm probably most excited about because I went through and like I said, found sets. So I found a print and then tried to find as many of the swatches in the same sort of print, but in various colorways so that in the future I can patchwork these together. Now, all of these were of very similar weight, many of them being 100% eco polyester, whatever that means. Um, but this print is just really, really light, not too busy. And then I saw these two coordinating fabrics. This is Sumbrella fabric. So 63% Sumbrella acrylic. 33% Sunbrella polyester, so it's water and stain resistant, only two of those, but I thought the print was fabulous. Then you have this really beautiful geometric print here in all of these colorways. Again, my idea is to patchwork the mess out of these and put them together. So I love this here. This is another Sunbrella acrylic polyester mix. So water and stain resistant. Then you have this print here of these circles. This is 55% recycled polyester, 45% eco polyester in so many different colorways. And I can't wait to patchwork these together. My idea, because they're of similar weights, is to actually go in and probably piece all of them together. I have just made a bomber jacket as you saw. So being able to go through and actually lay these out to see how much fabric I would actually need in order to be able to cut something out. The final print here is this really beautiful one. It's called Caddy Corner is the name of the pattern. And again, various colorways that coordinate that look so nice and serve a really interesting 
contrast. Oh, I'm just so excited. And it all started because a former coworker thought of me and sent me on a journey down someone's alleyway <laughs> into their driveway to sit down and rifle through fabrics until I found the ones that were just ready to go home with me. I cannot wait to bring these to you in future makes and I hope that you're excited to see what I come up with as well. Then my best friend had texted me that there was an estate sale going on in Bethesda, Maryland and she wanted to check it out so I called her that morning and I was like are we still going? Um, she couldn't go anymore but I decided to venture out and I went to go and see what was there. One of the photos showed that they had some vintage patterns so I was curious and wanted to go and take a peek. I'll pop in some video of the types of things that I saw while I was there. I did go on the final day so there wasn't a lot to actually see personally so I don't know if there was a ton more there that I missed out on if someone came and bought up a bunch and I was just left with the remnants or if that's sort of what was available. I walked away with three things. I got a Finnish harp. Why? Because my kids have been asking for instruments so I got them a Finnish harp. We'll see what comes of that but Sewing wise, I got two patterns, one vintage simplicity 8540. I was drawn to this because it looks really simple but effective. I like this high neckline here. I like the gathers, but I also like that it has like a standing sort of neckline and I'm a sucker for a full sleeve with some sort of cuff detail and I like that they have a full length option in there for me because I'm always going to want that. So it looks pretty darn simple as far as what is included and what is expected. So I'm interested in kind of looking into this. This is a single pattern size. So it's size 12 with a bust of a 34. So I'm just barely making the cut, but I will be able to grade up if necessary. And I felt like I was willing to do that. Then I have this vintage Vogue pattern 9149 and I was drawn to it because again higher neckline with this tie feature let me show you what the line drawings look like so you can appreciate the fact that this is a yoke that flows right into the sleeve with this neck tie feature and then the dress comes down from it. That I'm so intrigued by and cannot wait to see so here's the cutting layout. And there's that yoke piece there with that tie detail. And wow, like I can't wait to get stuck into that. Here are the line drawings, which I think are really, really cool. Suitable for knits as well. So very interesting. I'd be more than happy to give this a try. This is also a single size pattern, size 12. And the size 12, again, is a bust of a 34 in this pattern. So. Just barely making it but I will see because it has some gathering at the bus line hopefully it'll be a bit forgiving and I'll see once I open up the pattern how much ease was built into this pattern um, for the fitting so those were my finds and acquisitions this week in very like serendipitous ways <laughs> I just absolutely loved it in a week's time I will be preparing to take my kiddos we're gonna go on a trip gonna go to France for a little bit um, and spend some time there with some family now with that in mind I'm not gonna have a ton of time to sew I legitimately have this weekend and then no more weekends and then I'm away <laughs> until the new year so that means a couple of things I think after this bomber jacket this is really the thing that I wanted to see through and I'm like having an itch to do at least one of my mesh dresses but if I use M8064 I think I could whip it up quite quickly so it's not a priority but I would love to have it <laughs> but it's not a priority what I think I might turn my attention to is some selfless sewing I would love to gift my cousin's kids who are gonna go and visit I would love to gift them some handmade things and I think it'd be really cool to make like a matching set for all five of the kids like my two and her three and I think that would be really really nice to like have maybe shirts for the boys and then dresses for the girls 
and I have identified this Ankara fabric from my stash. I think I have the full six yards here. When I did Project Dress a Girl, I was able to get the five dresses that I made out of the six yards. I don't know if I'm, I think I'm trying to do too much by getting all five of these garments out of just this length. So I might have to mix and match. Maybe I'll do one print for the boys and then another print for the girls and then make them up something. But because I'm going to then need different sizes, I just have to be strategic about this. This is all I'm saying. Okay, so I think I might cut out if I do sort of like a simple sleeveless bodice and just have them wear long sleeve shirts under it. Um, I could probably get away with getting this done in time and then just do gathered skirts so I can then alter the length of that very easily, put some patch pockets, call it a day, and then use the little boys like camp style collar shirt pattern that I've been making for my son. But I might also be able to go in my stash and find a pattern that isn't a button front but uses woven fabric that's like a long sleeve something. So I'm going to have a rummage through my stash and see, but I might just get started on the girls' dresses because I feel like that's a bit easier. <laughs> if I know like their ages, then I'll probably just be able to find the pattern and just put a sash on it, put a waist tie, and then they'll just cinch it in as they need to. But that is where I hope to turn my attention to is some selfless sewing, help my cousin through her pajama pants, and then try making a head start on some of those things for my cousin's kids and my kids for our trip. Now, while I'm there, <laughs> I have already been watching Aisha's, um, and that is the Craftopreneur. If you don't watch the Craftopreneur's channel, she's like one of the first few sewing YouTubers that I ever found, and I love her channel so, so much. But she travels the world and will take you on journeys to the various uh fabric stores that you need to know about so she currently i think she has two one that's really recent i think is recently as earlier this year or last year at the latest and one that's a couple of years old that documents and vlogs her way through shopping in paris uh for fabric so i'm already taking notes and looking at some of the stores there so hopefully my cousin um when we arrive in paris can like take us around to those um shops i'm a bridesmaid in my best friend's wedding next year and i'm considering the possibility of making my own dress i have the swatches for the fabric colors and fabric types that she's with us using so I might take a couple of those with me on the trip and then go around to the various fabric stores and see if I could find something in my heart what I would love to find is something that is a pre pleated orange like satiny or like textured fabric that is my dream so fingers crossed I find something gorgeous in all of those fabric stores that line the streets out there but that is like the number one goal if anything else strikes my fancy we shall see but I do need to kind of I'm probably gonna have to talk budget or you know just like make some wise decisions it's just me and the littles on our way there and hopefully my mom will join my mom will join us and then we'll all come back so space is not really my issue it's more so like just finding the right things <laughs> And knowing that I have a lot waiting for me at home. I don't need to get a whole ton while I'm there, but it'd be nice to have some nice souvenir pieces. So that is what is kind of coming up, which I'm really excited about. Well, this has been a rather long video. I am so excited if you have stuck around and you're still here, please let me know in the comments down below what you're looking forward to sewing or what you're working on currently. Let me know what you feel about my bomber jacket. <laughs> I'm so excited about this and I will finish it y'all. I am not going to be out, of, out here with my lining just like flapping in the breeze. I do plan to hand stitch that baby closed, get it prim and proper and wonderful. It's going to be great. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you have any questions for me, let me know down below. And if you have any suggestions on where to go um, in Paris, let me know too. All right. Well, this has been fun. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Stay creative, folks. Bye-bye.